My brothers and sisters, good evening. Welcome again to the third night of our mission in English. Bienvenidos a la Santa Misión en Inglés. Uh, and we are following the same format as we have the other nights, and we will begin with the rosary. And I've been sharing different uh, little teachings on the rosary, the Eucharist, and whatnot. I'll explain the rest of the night after the rosary, but before we do that, um, so Franciscans, which is what I am, maybe some of you have never seen a priest who's dressed like this, uh, and uh, we have St. Francis over here in the corner if you need to know where the inspiration came from. And, uh, and it's, we do an interesting thing. Actually, St. Francis didn't have a rosary he wore. Some of the statues do have it. It was something that developed later, and it was inspired by uh, what was the common practice of the time. The common practice of the time was that a gentleman would always be armed with his sword. Those of you from the rancho know that you always carry your machete around, right? Uh, well, inspired by this, the Franciscans and the Dominicans also wore their armament on the same side. Just as a gentleman would, if need be, draw his sword to defend the honor of someone, so too the Franciscans would wear their arms on this right side. And so I'm going to display to you why we're dressed this way. Uh, sometimes some of the young people mistake us for Jedis. Um, I guess this is uh, a true light saver because Jesus, who is the light, is the true savior. Amen? Uh, but we, we make our own rosaries. And if you needed any proof that I'm a little bit extra, the brothers make fun of me. They call it the, the plumber rosary. I just, I just need a rosary that's, that's uh, heavy duty because it's some heavy-duty prayer that we're going to be doing. Amen? And so with that, I invite you all to enter into the recitation of the Holy Rosary, which will be followed by a brief teaching on the Eucharist and then, Euchar and then exposition of the Blessed Sacrament. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator in heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the God, the Father Almighty. From thence, he will come to judge the living and the dead. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. <clears throat> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, 
Jesus. <coughs> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, Save us from fire of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of the divine mercy. We are going to meditate the glorious mysteries. The first glorious mystery is the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. <clears throat> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. <coughs> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. <coughs> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. <coughs> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from fire of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of your divine mercy. The second glorious mystery is the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ into heaven. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. <clears throat> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. <coughs> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us of our sins, save thou from fire of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of your divine mercy. The third of glorious mysteries is the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the Virgin Mary and the Apostles in Pentecost Day. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. <coughs> Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from fire of hell, lead all souls to heaven, and especially those in most need of your divine mercy. The four glorious mystery. Jesus Christ, our Lord, took up into heaven his holy mother, the Virgin Mary. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from fire of hell, lead all souls to heaven, and especially those in most need of your divine mercy. The fifth glorious mystery is the coronation of the Virgin Mary, light the Queen of the heaven and earth. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh, my Jesus, Forgive us our sins, save us from fire of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of your divine mercy. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, hail our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor vanished children of Eve. To thee do we send our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Through then, most gracious Abokai, Shine eyes on mercy toward us, and after this our son, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus, O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. O God, whose only begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of the eternal life. Grant we busy thee, but we may be detained in our prayer. Honor to the Lord, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snare of the devil. May God review him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell, Satan and all the evil spirit, who ruin throughout the world, seeking the ruin of the souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Most sacred heart of Jesus, Immaculate Heart of Mary, St. Joseph, husband of Mary, all the angels and archangels, all the great saints of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Thank you. 
So just to review, the last couple of nights before Eucharistic adoration, I've given just a quick instruction on what it is. The first night I mentioned how it's an, an, an extension of the Mass. It's almost like as if we were taking the, the moment in the Mass when the, the priest is elevating the host, and in that moment of adoration, we're staying right there. The second night I explained what the, the vessels for Eucharistic adoration were. I explained what the monstrance is, the humeral veil. And very importantly, when the blessing comes, it's not the priest who's blessing, it's Jesus himself. That's why the priest covers his hands. Not so much because the vessel is holy, the vessel is holy, but the priest's hands are consecrated as well. So the priest covers his hands so that all of us can know that it is Jesus, the high priest, who is blessing. And tonight, to talk about the Eucharist, I'm going to resort to a shameless plug. So, I have a podcast that is the official podcast of the Eucharistic Revival. I don't listen to it, actually, because I heard it the first time. But I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Father Robert Spitzer. He is like, you know when somebody's really smart? I mean, like, not just smart, but like really smart. Father Robert Spitzer is one of those priests. And um, I interviewed him. And before I, I, I explain this, please know that every single Mass is a miracle. Amen? Every single Mass. The miracle is, is that what once was bread, what once was wine, has been transubstantiated into the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is why when we come into church, we genuflect. And it's not a, I'm just saying, it's not a curtsy. It's like if, if you're physically able, you go down on a knee because we adore the presence of Jesus who is here. Jesus is here. And that's why when we come into church, we, we show reverence. That's why, I'm just saying, that's why when we come into church, we don't, we, don't, we don't dress like we're at the beach because of who Jesus is. That's why we show reverence. If you were going to meet, I don't know, like some important person, would you be chewing gum right before you meet them? I hope not. These are the reasons why we ask you to do some of these things because of who Jesus is. And he's here. He is here. But then, I didn't know about some things that were going on. So in the, in, in the last 30 years, there have been documented and scientifically studied Eucharistic miracles. There's a Eucharistic miracle in Argentina when Pope Francis was Archbishop of, of Buenos Aires, there was this Eucharistic miracle that happened where the host began to bleed. And what did he do? He said, look, we're gonna send it to a modern forensic scientist. And they sent it to New York City, to Columbia University. They did not tell them where it was from. And then they reported back, uh, this blood type is AB, uh, this is, um, I'm going to get some of the medical terms wrong, myocardial tissue, it's tissue, from, it's tissue from the heart. We don't know how exactly you got this specimen, but we do know that this person was beaten to death, and this happened recently. There was a murder. This is a crime, is what the report came back from Columbia University. Then about 10 years later in Mexico, in Tulum, Mexico, there was, a, there was a Eucharistic miracle that this atheist doctor was invited to come and to investigate. And this atheist doctor, with all the doubt in, 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 in his heart, saw the results of the test and from his own pocket paid for a, n a number of other successive forensic tests, which ain't cheap. And each and every single time, 
the results were just mind-boggling. Not only was it the same blood type, not only was it from the same part of the human body, but this miracle in Mexico, this tissue was producing, continued to produce white blood cells, which if you know anything about medicine, you know that's not possible a long time after someone has died. It's basically once you die, the white blood cells stop, and this tissue was producing it. In fact, it still is today. They sent it to forensic studies. They said the same thing, that this person died of severe physical trauma. Somebody beat this person to death. And then there was another Eucharistic miracle in Poland, which the same things were happening. And, and so I'm kind of like, I'm a priest. You know, people come up to me and they say, oh my gosh, I, the Virgin Mary appeared to me and it's my job to de-escalate. It's my job to like, well, okay, well, let's, let me ask you some questions. And trust me, if it's Our Lady appearing to you, I'm gonna be the first, I'm gonna be your number one fan. But it's kind of our job to ask these questions because these things don't just happen. And so I asked Father Robert Spitzer, which by the way, you can check it out. The, the, the podcast is called Revive with Father Augustino. And, um, and I asked him, Father, hold on a second. We have like all this modern technical stuff. What about DNA? And he said, that is the interesting thing. With each of the specimens, there's enough tissue to identify muscle, to identify blood, to identify all these other things, but none of the specimens are able to render a DNA sampling. And I asked, what does that mean? And Father Robert said, we can only speculate, but if I may, and if Father Robert Spitzer speculates, it's like three times higher than any of us, let me tell you that. And he said, perhaps it is because of this. Jesus had no human father. For DNA to form, the 26 chromosomes and the 26 chromosomes must unite to form the, the double helix DNA. I sound really smart right now, right? <laughs> and he said, perhaps God is showing us the miracle of the incarnation yet again. And I asked him, why do you think this is happening? And he said, perhaps God is giving us a grace to show us, even with all of our technology, that miracles happen every day. This same Eucharist that was consecrated saying the same prayers will be exposed before us here tonight Jesus, present body and blood, soul and divinity. Let us enter into this time of prayer. Let's enter in. Like we say where I'm from, con ganas. Why? Because this is God. What do you have to bring to him? What is it that you have to, to share? Perhaps you came here begrudgingly Perhaps your mom said, Andale, wake up. We got to go to church. Oh, man, I got to go to church. We have a treasure here. How good it is that you are here. I, like, DL, I just saw a whole bunch of moms turn to their kids right now. I'm not pointing fingers, throwing no one under the bus. But maybe God called you here. Maybe God has something for you here tonight a special grace, a special gift. Let us enter in to Eucharistic adoration with this expectation because God is a father who keeps his promises. O saluta
we adore you, most holy Lord Jesus Christ, here and in all your churches throughout the world. And we bless you, because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Litany of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. God, our Father in heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world. God, the Holy Spirit. Holy Trinity, one God. Heart of Jesus, Son of the Eternal Father. Heart of Jesus, formed by the Holy Spirit in the womb of the Virgin Mother. Heart of Jesus, one with the Eternal Word. Heart of Jesus, infinite in majesty. Heart of Jesus, holy temple of God. Heart of Jesus, Tabernacle of the Most High. Heart of Jesus, House of God and Gate of Heaven. Heart of Jesus, aflame with love for us. Heart of Jesus, Source of Justice and Love. Heart of Jesus, Full of Goodness and Love. Heart of Jesus, Wellspring of All Virtue. Heart of Jesus, worthy of all praise. Heart of Jesus, King and center of all hearts. Heart of Jesus, treasure house of wisdom and knowledge. Heart of Jesus, in whom there dwells the fullness of God. Heart of Jesus, in whom the Father is well pleased. Heart of Jesus, from whose fullness we have all received. Heart of Jesus, desire of the eternal hills. Heart of Jesus, patient and full of mercy. Heart of Jesus, generous to all who turn to you. Heart of Jesus, fountain of life and holiness. Heart of Jesus, atonement for our sins. Heart of Jesus, overwhelmed with insults. Heart of Jesus, broken for our sins. Heart of Jesus, obedient even to death. Heart of Jesus, pierced by a lance. Heart of Jesus, source of all consolation. Heart of Jesus, our life and resurrection. Heart of Jesus, our peace and reconciliation. Heart of Jesus, victim for our sins. Heart of Jesus, salvation of all who trust in you. Heart of Jesus, hope of all who die in you. Heart of Jesus, delight of all the saints. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, gentle and humble of heart, make our hearts like unto thine. Let us pray. Father, we rejoice in the gifts of love we have received from the heart of Jesus, your Son. Open our hearts to share his life and continue to bless us with his love. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the Lord. We'll observe a moment of silence.
litany of humility. The response will be, deliver me, Jesus. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Jesus, meek and humble of heart, hear me from the desire of being esteemed. Deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being loved, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being extolled, from the desire of being honored, from the desire of being praised, from the desire of being preferred to others, from the desire of being consulted, from the desire of being approved, from the fear of being humiliated, from the fear of being despised, from the fear of suffering rebukes, from the fear of being calumniated, from the fear of being forgotten, from the fear of being ridiculed, from the fear of being wronged, from the fear of being suspected. The response is, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it, that others may be loved more than I. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it, that others may be esteemed more than I. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it, that in the opinion of the world, others may increase and I may decrease. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it, that others may be chosen and I set aside. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it, that others may be praised and I unnoticed. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it, that others may be preferred to me in everything. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it, that others may become holier than I, provided that I become as holy as I should. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. We pray now the St. Michael prayer. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. Cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who are about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. It occurs to me, my brothers and sisters, that I did not give a rundown of the night uh, earlier. Apologies. So at 7.30, we're going to have Eucharistic adoration. And then there will be some prayers that we just finished saying. And afterwards, I will give a reflection within the context of Eucharistic adoration, which is loud. Uh, of course, that we mention Jesus in the reflection. The reflection should be about Jesus in some way, shape, or form. And I assure you, this reflection will be. And then we'll have a moment of silence. And then there will be a humble uh, plea, a, co a collection uh, that, the, um, that the parish is taking up for, for the mission that the Lord has entrusted me and the Friars of the Renewal. And for that, I am grateful. And then we'll pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet, followed by benediction, and then our night will be complete. So I would like to preface this reflection by saying, tomorrow I'm leaving on a jet plane, don't know when I'll be back again. 
So send all your complaints to Father Jet and Father Desmond and Father Peter. Because, my brothers and sisters, we're going to go there. We're going to go there. As a Franciscan, we have a particular uh, insight or perspective into, into how God provides for things. You, St. Francis felt called to beg for all his needs, and he would literally go door to door begging for food. And, you know, and us nowadays, what we do is, is, is we go to the grocery stores, uh, and like a lot of the food that's going to be pitched, they, they can't sell it, you know, legally, they can't sell it. And so we're very happy to receive it. And in that moment of abundance, we share it with all of our, our neighbors because God is good and he provides. And as you can tell, I mean, I have been begging for food for 23 years. I have not bought food for 23 years. And as you can see, the Lord provides. <laughs> this is a full-figured man that's proof of God's providence. But God provides because he has moved people's hearts to the need. And sometimes I think that we as Franciscans, like we have a need precisely to bring to you all a question. We're just a bridge to show you to something greater. It's not about providing uh, some Franciscan brothers with some food because this, this is passing, but it is about a deeper relationship that God wants to establish in you. Going back to the first day of our parish mission. On Sunday, we heard the reading of Jesus going into the desert. And there he was tempted. Three temptations. And these three temptations, to turn stone into bread, to, to claim all the, the worship for himself, to own the entire world. These three temptations, the remedy for these temptations are what we focus on during Lent, prayer, penance, and almsgiving. The penance is for the, the unbalanced desire for something that we need. Obviously, you know, we need to eat, but if that desire is unbalanced, then, then we need to moderate that with some, some, some fasting. We talked about that yesterday, especially how fasting has a spiritual battle component to it. The desire to, to uh, bring all worship to yourself needs to be moderated through prayer because you, just in case you did not get the memo, you are not God. The world does not revolve around you. And uh, if somebody needs me to repeat that to like one of their kids, just find me afterwards. I'll be happy to do that, because like I said, I'm getting on a jet plane. So we need to pray, and a, and a position of prayer is on our knees, because, because we need God, and our prayers ask for this. And then that third temptation, isn't it crazy? When the devil said he took Jesus to a high mountain and he showed them all the peoples of the world. And he said, if you want, I will give it to you. I will give. I know what your mission is. I know why you came, Jesus. You came to bring all these people to yourself. I'll give them to you. Only bow down and worship me. It was the temptation, not so much of having, but it was the temptation of Jesus' mission being fulfilled without the cross. 
Because this is what Jesus had come to do. And it is through the cross that he would win a people unto his own. It is through the blood of Jesus that we are redeemed. And it is through his cross and resurrection that our lives have purpose and meaning and direction and mission. And so the remedy for this last temptation, my brothers and sisters, is almsgiving. What does that mean? Whose alms and who are we giving them to? Almsgiving is giving of your treasure to something good. Translation, if you got some cheddar, you need to give that over to something better. Translation, give of what you have. I'm not making this up. This is very, very biblical. Beginning with Jesus. In Matthew chapter 22, verse 23, he mentioned that it is good to give tithes, but beware of those people who are very good at giving tithes, but are yet wretched to their brothers and sisters. Jesus gives us a very clear indication. It, it's not just about you giving money. It's about your conversion of heart. It's about something happening within you. And I can tell you, I have been on the other side of something happening in someone's heart. Let me explain. So um, when I was first stationed in Patterson, New Jersey, uh, we started out and like, like I just said, you know, we beg for our food. And it's kind of hard, hard to beg for food when nobody knows you, right? And then you just show up like, hey, <laughs> you guys got any extra food? Like, what are you? Who are you? I don't know you. So it takes a little bit of time to kind of get to know people. And what had happened is like, we actually like, we didn't have any food. And we were there and like literally, like all we had for dinner one night was, it was just like these saltine crackers. And I said, brothers, let's pray. God is gonna provide. I have mass right now. And like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let the people know at the mass and let's see what happens. And so as I was going to the Mass, before Mass, this, this lady comes up to me, and she's like, um, Father, I don't know why. This might seem weird, but I felt like I needed to stop at the store and buy the brothers eggs. And I was like, no way! Wow, that was quick! The prayer worked, and I told her that, that you know, we were... We didn't have any food, and God was using her. God was working through her. God was speaking to her, and that I was, we were so happy. And so I bring this dozen eggs in a bag, and the brothers are, <laughs> it's, like, it's like something right out of Christmas story or something. The brothers were there. Of course, our heat didn't work at the time. The boiler was down. Oh, yeah, painting the picture. They were all, like, you know, you know coated up and stuff, eating um, we did have electricity, so you know, it's not a candlelight, you know. And I, and I show up to the, to, the, to, the, to the refractory. I open the door and I say, brothers, eggs! And all the brothers to a man just yells out, yeah! Because we knew that was God. We, we just prayed. We don't have any food, God. And then, and then this lady said, you know what? I think I, and God moved through her. It's not about even how much you give. Don't tell your pastor I just said that. It is the conversion that is meant to happen. We all know the story of the widow's might. There was a widow who came to the temple and she gave a penny. Was, they even think it's less, worth less than a penny. And this, this other man comes in and gives all this, 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 this amount of money. And Jesus asked his disciples, who gave more? 
So somebody shows up to this church and, and, and this, this, this little lady gives a penny in the collection basket and somebody else just like takes out a, a wad of hundreds. I don't know what you're doing with a wad of hundreds. It would make me actually kind of suspicious. But be that as it may, you throw the wad of hundreds in the collection basket. My question is, who gives more is what Jesus asked. And he said, this widow has given more because she has given all that she has. You see, sometimes we give of our largesse. And perhaps that's something that we need to confess. What does it look like for you to give until it hurts? Like Mother Teresa of Calcutta said. She's right there. She said, give until it hurts. What does that mean? Is there an amount? Is there a calculation? Well, brothers and sisters, it's very simple. Let's go to the Word of God. Let's go to the Word of God. The first recorded instance of an, a tithe offering was Abraham. And it's very interesting. Perhaps some of you have, have uh, heard of Scott Hahn, a biblical scholar. He has this book called A Father Who Keeps His Promises, and he goes all in to this offering of Abraham. Abraham had just won a battle, and, uh, and he gave a tenth of everything that he got after this battle to this mysterious figure, Melchizedek. Perhaps you've heard of this. He was the king of Salem. The king of Salem was a town that eventually became Jerusalem. And so he is understood in biblical theology as, as this, this like eternal figure. Priests, when they're ordained, they're ordained to the, to the priesthood according to the right of Melchizedek, something even beyond the priesthood of the Old Covenant. Anyway, that's something else. And so he gave a tithe and then he offered up an offering of guess what? Usually back in the day, you give an offering of, a, of a, some sort of uh, animal offering. But no, he gave an offering of bread and wine, a prefigurement of how when we come to the Eucharistic sacrifice, we also should be giving. Then in, in Scripture, in Genesis Chapter 28, Jacob, the grandson of Abraham, promised a tenth of everything. He probably paid this, this, this offering off as he went, but he bound himself with a vow. Under the Mosaic law, it was a little bit more structured. They had a priestly class that all the priestly class did was they hurried about helping the people and they didn't have land of their own so the tithe was more organized because these priests, the Levites, um, needed to, to subsist. And so this was given for them. And then the question of giving a tenth of everything that you have or what comes in to God, it was somewhat normalized. Now, let me say that the Old Testament did teach this. And under the Mosaic law, it was required. We, we don't live under the Mosaic law. Jesus came and he fulfilled the Old Testament. We live under the New Covenant. What I'm saying here is not required. Someone's not going to go around and like look at your bank accounts and ask, you know, how much are you giving to the church? And in fact, I know, I know, like just looking around, there's so much generosity here. But I want to challenge you in this area because I believe, my brothers and sisters, we need conversion in our giving, not just the giving. You see, my brothers and sisters, I really do think that when we give, it's, we, we treat giving to, to God as like a transaction. We treat it as if we're going to Walmart 
and that we demand something in return. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, uh, being tended to. I'm not talking about something that, that you should be tended to, but I'm, th I'm, I'm talking about you f feeling that in some way, shape, or form, you have a right to something or that you're playing politics because of what you give. And I'm here to tell you, you are wrong. It's not about that. I'm also here to say that sometimes we complain about what things cost in the church, but we have no complaint about what things cost outside. I'm going to go there. I guess I can say this because I'm Mexican. When there is a, a menial charge for a quinceañera or for a wedding, to feel offended by that. And I've seen people feel offended by that. Whereas for the couple of cents that are charged here, there is an exorbitant, even, even embarrassing amount of money spent on a party. Sometimes I wonder if our practice, my people's practice of going overboard for quinceañeras might be a an overcompensation for the lack of parenting that we've given our child up until that point. But even beyond that, listen to what the Word of God says in the prophet Micah, chapter 3, verse 7 through 10. This is a time of Lent. This is a time of returning to the Lord. The word of God says, return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord. But you ask, how are we to return? How are we to return? I was stationed in Honduras, in our mission in Honduras. And one of my jobs was I worked with a nonprofit organization in the United States that did surgeries, medical surgeries, for people who really needed it. And my job was to get visas for people who needed those, those surgeries. Let me tell you what, if you didn't believe I could do miracles before, I got visas for people who, like, wow, it was amazing. Because there was, there was this one girl like, we, we met her when she was 13 years old. She was paraplegic, and she literally, she crawled around everywhere for 13 years. She didn't even have a wheelchair. We found a wheelchair. We brought her case to this organization. They examined her, and they said, this girl can walk. She, she needs a surgery, and she needs therapy, but, but, but we can do this. And so I set about getting all the paperwork in order, going back and forth to the capital, uh, arranging all these different arrangements. She was underage. She had to travel with her mom. You know, let me tell you what. We figured it out. She flies over to the States. She gets this surgery. Uh, people get, get wind of this, and they, they lived in this little hut of a house. Uh, the first lady of Honduras hears about this and builds them a brick cinder block house. So they have like a, a home to live in, sturdy. And I, and, I, and I leave, and I don't see them come back because I had to start seminary. And I come back a couple years later, and, and one of the first things I did is I wanted to go visit this family. I was with this family like every day, working with them, working with them. Things got a little hard, but I wanted to see, her name was Nersi Suyapa, I wanted to see her walk. And so I come over, I knock on the door, and they see me, all the kids, ah, fry. Everyone got excited, and I see for the first time Nersi with my own eyes. I see her walk. She had crutches, and it was a miracle. It was a miracle. This girl crawled on the floor for 13 years, and I was so happy. That's all I needed. But what I didn't notice is that in the corner of my eye, the mother whispered something to one of the sisters, and she shot off. She, 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 she left right away, and then the mother said to me, Fray, vas a almorzar con nosotros, verdad? And I was thinking, 
no, I just ate. Um, actually, I have to get back to the friary. And then she just gave me this look, this like, this like Hispanic mother look that if you dare go against what I'm saying, there will be consequences. So I was just like, okay. Um, for the record, uh, Filipino moms have this look too. And I was like, um, I can stay for a little bit. And then something happened that, that no one could prepare you for. I sat down at their humble table. Her father was there, who's, who's, he was a day laborer. He worked hard every single day. And then the little girl came running back with this barbecue chicken plate. But just one of them. They put it down in front of me and they say, eat, eat. And I'm feeling horrified. I look around and then the mother just puts on the plate some eggs with some tomato, half a spoon for each child. I open up the plate and it has a quarter of a chicken with, with fixings. And I'll never forget the look of those little kids as they saw that chicken. And I knew that if I didn't eat that, it would be offensive. They're saying in their gift, you helped my daughter walk. We want to give something to you. We don't eat like this, but we want you to know that we are grateful, except that I completely lost all my appetite right then and there. I thought, what do I do? What do I do? There's no class in seminary that prepares you for those things. And so what I did is I devoured that piece of chicken. And I started going, mm, oh, this is so good. Mm, oh, this is so, thank you, thank you. Do you want some? And I quickly began to chop it up into pieces and like oh this is you have to have some it's so good and I didn't look I didn't dare look at the mother and all the little kids were happy to receive a piece of the chicken and before you knew it all of us had something I don't know if you've ever been on the receiving end of someone who has nothing and and they give you the little that they have This is how you return to the Lord. You give out of gratitude. I was in LA a couple days ago, and uh, that airport, LAX, there's a whole lot of things going on over there, let me tell you. And I was waiting for my ride to pick me up, and, and I saw the cutest little black girl She's just like looking at me, and I just looked right back at her, and she waved at me, and I waved at her. I just love the innocence of children. And I saw that she was, she was leaning on like a couple of, what are those, those big storage bins? I was like, okay. And then I'm waiting, and I see her father and mother, mother with a little baby, move all of these huge, it must have been at least six or seven huge uh, those, 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 what are they called? The, the big things that they sell at Home Depot, like the, the stackable big Tupperware things that you, that. There was like four or five of them. And then finally it clicks. These people are moving everything they have from wherever they're from over here. This young family, who knows their past, who knows their history, but they're here at the airport with all this stuff, and we got through immigration, so I thought to myself, this is like Mary and Joseph fleeing into Egypt. And then the bus stops, 
to, to go to, I'm not sure where, and then this man by himself was loading all his possessions onto the bus. And honestly, my brothers and sisters, I remembered that meal in Honduras. And I left my stuff and I just said, in, in my big man voice, hey, hey man, you need some help? Which is universal male language for, I got you, bro. And I just began to help him load all his possessions into a bus. And I came back and I realized I might not have noticed that had I not received, had someone not given to me. Return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord. But you ask, how are we to return? And the word of God says, will a mere mortal rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how are we robbing you? In tithes and offerings. You are under a curse in your whole nation because you are robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be a room enough to store it. We need to unpack that. First of all, maybe some of you guys are thinking, I don't got a penny to my name. I don't know what you're talking about. But there is still something you can give. You can give of your time. You can give of your gifts. Sometimes I've, I've been asked to go to different parishes and ask money for the missions. Maybe you remember when that missionary went to your parish and showed you the pictures, right, and told you the stories. Well, I've, I've, I've been that guy, but I've been in those places. And I know the need. With these two hands, I have saved people's lives by giving them rice and beans. Simple antibiotics, I have saved people's lives. I've seen it. But I would rather you see it. I would rather you do it. Don't live your lives without giving of your time. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 25, when you did this to the least of my brethren, you did this to me. It is part of the revelation of Jesus Christ to serve the poor. No one is exempt from it. Oh, I can't go to a foreign country, Father. I'm, I, I can't travel. I can't go up those mountains. I can't crawl into those, those little homes. Perhaps you cannot. But there is a mission here. Jesus is here too. I've been to some parts of Dallas. Let me tell you, there's some stuff going on right here. But even if you can't, there will be those who go in your name. And I promise you, I promise you, we pray for the ones who provide what we need to serve the poor. We pray for you. I was reading this gospel, and honestly, I was thinking about the corruption in so many countries. And like I said, I'm going to go there. Please know I don't mean offense. I'm just 
trying to break open the word of God. Micah chapter 3 verse 9 says that you are under a curse in your whole nation for not tithing and offering. I thought to myself, how many complaints do I hear about politics and governors and elected officials? They're corrupt. They don't believe. They're leading us all down. I'm going to start telling people, do you tithe? Do you? Maybe you should. And in the countries of my ancestors, the, the constant, difficult corruption. There's so many beautiful things in Latin America, but sometimes it feels we can't find an honest politician to save anybody's life. I guess that's the same everywhere, but let me ask, do people tithe in Latin America? Do people tithe in the United States? Perhaps if we did, the Lord would bless us. It's right there in Scripture. But then the Word of God says, test me in this. Didn't Jesus just quote Scripture on Sunday, saying, you shall not put the Lord God to the test? This is true. The only place in Scripture where God says, test me, is in giving. Now, let me take a step back. There's this thing called the prosperity gospel that says, you know, well, you give to the Lord and you're going to receive from the Lord. I'm not talking about that. I'm not. What I am talking about is believing that if the Lord is asking us to do something, that he has a reason for it. And I believe, and this is my speculation, that we live in the richest country in the history of the world. And I know, maybe you guys aren't on the whatever, the 2%, but even still, even still, this can become an idol unless we keep it in proper place. I know parents that work constantly and produce, and they tell me with a sincere heart, this is for them, this is for my children, and I have told them before, your children want you. Would that you could be home more with them. What are we really slaving for. And I, I know it's hard. I know it's not easy. And I know we just came out of a pandemic where people lost their jobs, people couldn't pay, make their mortgages. I, I, I know, I know because I've, I, I tried, I've help people find ways to pay their rent and their bills and bring them food. I've, I, I know. But even still, give of your need, even if it is a penny. Why do I bring any of this up? Trust me, uh, Father Jet did not ask me to talk about this. This is, this is happening. The temptation to have it all is, is slightly being whispered into our own hearts. What I'm saying is that if the Lord has something for you, then this is good. And our response to this gift is definitely gift. When I was uh, 
stationed in the Bronx, there was this beautiful Puerto Rican family. And they grew up in the Bronx when the Bronx was burning. When the Bronx was the Bronx, the Bronx, they were there. And I remember the, the, the oldest son saying, yeah, father, it was crazy, but you gotta do what you gotta do. And that's what I call Bronx spirituality. You gotta do what you gotta do. And this family, they live in the projects. And their sons, they all joined the service, even one of their daughters was, is a Marine. And this is kind of like little by little how they're, how they're growing. Now this woman, Denise, has her grandchildren and her great-grandchildren. But every Thursday, she would make Puerto Rican beans and rice. And she would come and she would say, you brothers do so much for us, this is the least I can do for you. My brothers and sisters, I'm a little Mexican from South Texas. I went to the Bronx struggling like you wouldn't believe. Those beans and rice saved my vocation. You never know what your little gift will do. You never know, no matter how small. But allow that movement in your heart. Allow the Lord to move and give this gift because he has given us so great a gift. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Take a moment of silence. Good evening. Well, um, that's that. Please join me in thanking Father Agostino for a wonderful mission in these last three days. Uh, unfortunately for all of you, he cannot be your pastor or your parochial vicar. You are stuck with us. Father, thank you so much. Um, your talks this couple of days have been very inspiring and has stirred up, I think, in many of us uh, uh, an urge to re-examine our own relationship with Jesus, right? Uh, that we come to church. Why do we really come to church? And who is Jesus to us? And, and that is what Lent really is about, an opportunity for renewal, an opportunity for us to go back to our basics, go back to what is important. And, and I think these last three days have laid a foundation for us as we go deeper into Lent that we may truly have a fruitful Lent that helps us come out at the end of the day on Easter night a little bit closer to Christ than we all are today. And on behalf of Father Jed and the people of St. Michael, we are ever so grateful to you for your time. Uh, it took me uh, about a year just to get him to agree to come here. So, a good thank you so much, Father. And as we have been doing every night, uh, Father works in uh, Patterson, New Jersey with uh, inner city youths. Uh, that is a demographic that has a lot of challenges and Father has dedicated his life to it. And so we at St. Michael's, in gratitude for him coming out, we have been taking up a collection every night so that at the end of it, today, tomorrow, we'll gather what we have collected and give it to him so that he can go back to his community and use it to continue to do the good work that, that he has been doing. And the name of his ministry is Corazon Puro. That's pure heart, yes? So pure heart. Uh, it reminds me of the psalm, you know, creating me uh, a pure heart. Yeah, there you go. So, so uh, uh, our ushers are going to come around right now for the uh, support 
and the collection. And a couple of uh, you tonight have asked about making out checks. So if you are going to make out a check, make the check to Corazon Puro. That's C-O-R-A-Z-O-N. Puro, P-U-R-O. If that is hard to spell, just write out a blank check and uh, our business manager will write it out, will fill out the name in the office tomorrow. Uh, after all, that's why we pay him the big bucks. And finally, tomorrow evening, to tie up this Lenten mission, we are going to have uh, a night of reconciliation. We're going to have four priests available tomorrow, starting at 5.30 p.m. So there will be no evening mass tomorrow. Instead, we will have uh, a penitential service and reconciliation. So we invite you, to all, all of you, to that, to take an opportunity to wrap up the Lenten mission with reconciliation. Thank you all very much. Thank you for the wonderful turnout these last three days. Uh, we're grateful to you. And let us continue to keep each other in prayer. Thank you. And thank you once more for the Agostino. Perhaps in this moment we can sing a song to our Blessed Mother. Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing. You reign now in splendor with Jesus our King. Ave, ave. Ave Maria, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave. Maria. Hail, Holy Queen, enthroned above, O Maria. Hail, Mother of mercy and of love, O Triumph all ye cherubim, sing with us ye seraphim. Heaven and earth resound the hymn, Salve, 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 Regina. The Divine Mercy Chaplet. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You expired, Jesus, but the source of life gushed forth for souls, and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O fount of life, unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. O blood and water which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy for us. O blood and water which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy for us. O blood and water which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy for us. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. 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 Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. 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 Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. 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 Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. 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 
Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. 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 Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless, and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We observe now a couple of minutes of silence.
Tantum ergo sacramentum, penemermo cernui, et anticum documentum, no voce dat ritui, restet fides supplementum, sensum defectui, genitori, genitorque, lauset iubi, Salus Procedenti Abuntroc Crasi Laudatsi given them bread from heaven. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may also always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. The divine praises, blessed be God, blessed be his holy name, blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man, blessed be the name of Jesus, blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Blessed be the great mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. 
Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. May the heart of Jesus in the most blessed sacrament be praised, adored, and loved with grateful affection at every moment in all the tabernacles of the world, even until the end of time. Amen. Holy God, we praise thy name. With this, we conclude this year's Lenten mission, but in many ways, you guys are just beginning. Please count on my prayers, and thank you. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for being here. And please pray for me as the Lord continues to send me out to, to go uh, bring souls to him. Thank you very much. God bless.